It is time to talk college football. Week zero is here, but we are attacking week one on today's show. We're going to get ahead of the market. Action Network has put out cash flows as well. They weren't available for us last uh, you know, until now, so that will help our cap. We are also welcoming to open up his account, his 2024 college account here on Betting with the Bag, coming to us from Los Angeles, California. Please welcome our friend Wine Time Sports to the show. Wine Time, how are you, my guy? Jimmy the Bag, my guy. Good to see you. Good to be here. Um, blessed to be here. Ready to talk some college football with you, my guy. Let's get that cash, my friend. We have two games that we are attacking on the week one college football slate. And the first one is a big one. We have Miami Hurricanes. This is the best Miami Hurricanes squad we have seen in a long, long time. Miami Hurricanes versus the Florida Gators. It is a make or break year for Billy Napier and this Florida Gators squad. Let's get after it right now and set this one up. Saturday, August 31st, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville, Florida. Let's get into the line history and the cash flow and hear how our guy Wine Time Sports is opening up his account. For those of you guys watching this for the first time, all of the cappers on our show will be tracked now, one thing that we can guarantee is honesty and transparency. Let's get into our August 31st spot here line-wise. We have these Hurricanes right now at Pinnacle at minus 3 at minus 111. This opened up at 2.5 at minus 111. That was on August 20th. A uh, little bit of juice. And then the following day, the 21st, on Wednesday, this moved to minus 3. Then there was a slight move against that move. You know, the Gators started getting juiced. Uh, that stopped right now. Miami at minus three at minus 111, a half point move towards them. Let's get into the total for this one. We're using pinnacle line moves. For the total, we are sitting here with these Hurricanes and Gators at 54. This opened up at 54. There's been no movement. This has been available for three days, and there's been no movement. Let's see what Bet Online has done. Bet Online first to the market. Bet Online has movement. This opened up at 56 at Bet Online. This opened up July 8th at Bet Online. Shout out to Bet Online for having the balls to get to the market first. If anybody looking for a new account on Bet Online, if you go through our website, pubsportsradio.com, and use our link and promo code PUBSports, they will give you a 100% bonus up to $1,000, and it doesn't have to be Bitcoin. It can be cash. And we have our big poker tournament in one week at Bet Online, Friday, August 30th as well. This opened up at 56, got down to 55 and a half, back to 56. That was July 27th. Then there was a one and a half point move the afternoon of July 27th down to 54 and a half, now 54 and sitting there. There's been no movement at Bet Online since August 14th on this spot. Let's get to the cash flow here. For this one, finally get the look at cash flow in college football. We've been waiting uh, for this to be available, and it is now available. So let's go over to 3.30 p.m. on Saturday and see what we are dealing with. We have 33% of the tickets and 35% of the cash on the Hurricanes. I'm surprised at that. I thought that would be more of a public spot. 67 and 65 on the Gators. Total-wise, it's a coin flip, 50-50. Just 4,412 tickets in at this point. 50% of the tickets, 55% of the cash on the under, and we've seen that drop. Here we go. Crystal Ball's chance, hired in 2022, and this is the best roster he has had. This is the best roster we've seen in a long time. Also, offensive coordinator Shannon Dawson in the second season. Lance Guidry in his second season. Offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator in their second season, ready to roll here. And Cam Ward comes over. Washington State transfer 3,736 yards, 25 touchdowns, and seven picks. He also had eight rushing touchdowns, which really doesn't have a lot to do with his athleticism, but has to do with his smarts. Cam Ward comes over. Could this team make the college football playoff, the Hurricanes? In Florida, Napier better step up, and it's not going to be easy. Now, Graham Mertz is a possible NFL draft pick. 
Uh, could be a high draft pick if he has a, bag e a big year. But this defense was ransacked in the transfer portal. Let's hear how our guy Wine Time is opening up his 2024 account on our show. Take it away, Wine Time. Hurricanes, Gators in Gainesville, Florida. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, shout out to everyone in the chat right here. I see Mexican Elvis in there. I see Nanya, uh, Betting Pros, Coin Nanya, Justin McKelvey, all my guys right there. Shout out to you guys. But yeah, getting into this game right here. Um, I got in a little bit early. Uh, for everyone out there, when you're betting college football, betting NFL, it's best to always get in early. The lines are going to always move. They're never going to stay the same uh, when they come out. Try to attack them early. So it's nice that we're able to do this so we can advance. Um, but, yeah, talking about this Miami program, it's a team that I've been actually super high on uh, going into this season. I've been paying attention uh, a lot to Cam Ward into their fall camp, their spring camp. I watched their spring game. Uh, Cam Ward looked nothing short but spectacular out there. Um, you know, Cam Ward is coming over from the Pac-12, what I know pretty well, actually. Um, played very well at Washington State for what he had around him. Didn't have necessarily a good offensive line or even a lot of weapons. He had Josh Kelly, who actually also transferred out. But – um, didn't really have a lot to work with there, but he still put up numbers. He was still able to get some wins, uh, keep him in, uh, keep them in the games most of the time. Um, if he had a little bit more protection, I think they would have been a lot more successful. Coming over to uh, Miami, he's got a lot better of an offensive line. Um, a lot of these guys are experienced. Um, from what I've seen in fall camp, um, them, the defensive line, have really been getting after it. Um, you look at this defensive line from Miami, it's one of the best defensive lines in the nation fall uh, Start with Ruben Bain coming off seven and a half sacks last year as a freshman, true freshman uh, for Miami, Sp physical specimen. This guy's going to be a first-round draft choice once he's available. Uh, he's still got another two years to play, though. Uh, then they grab a guy over from Tennessee who could have probably gone day two in the NFL draft, if we're being completely honest. Um, Tyler Barron, I believe his name is, uh, coming over from the SEC, had seven and a half sacks there at Tennessee, a lot of QB hurries. Um, these guys are going to be rushed coming off the edge. They've been giving this Miami offensive line a lot of trouble. Cam Ward a lot of trouble. So they've been kind of it's been ironing, has been sharpening iron. And uh I think it's only made this offensive line better for Cam Ward around him. But um, but yeah, they are gonna be playing here in the swamp, one of the most uh intense places to play in college football. It's gonna be sold out. Same time, Miami is playing there, two Florida teams. Uh, I do see a lot of fans coming out there from Miami. A lot of fans out there have a lot of high hopes for this team, as they should. This is the, probably the most talented team I've personally ever seen them have on paper. Um, you look at who they got in the transfer portal other than Cameron Moore. They go after Sam Brown from Houston, one of the better receivers in the American Conference last year. You watch that tape against Texas, whew, he ran some good routes and he went by a lot of defenders. Um, he's going to be good at, uh, in the ACC. And then, you know, uh, one of the biggest components, too, they grabbed Damian Martinez, another uh, Pac-12 guy running back from Oregon State, just a big-time bruiser. This guy's 6'2", 235. Um, you don't want to tackle this guy more than 20 times in a game. And uh, I think this guy's going to be pounding the rock a lot of the time. They bring back sophomore Mark Fletcher, sophomore running back, another bruiser, 6'2", 220. These two guys are going to be hard to tackle. Um, they're going to give Florida a lot of trouble. Florida struggled last year. Um, had one of the worst uh, run stopping uh, run stopping defenses in the nation. Uh, I believe they were 113, and they, it was an average of 5.2 yards a carry. Crazy. Um, these two guys are both averaging four to five yards a carry. And if Florida, I just think the keys to this game for Miami is really going to be to run the football here because if you run with those two guys, you're going to wear out this Florida defense early. Um, you know, it's the first day. I would think everyone's in is well conditioned, but it's tough to tackle two running backs that are 220, 230 big dudes that have played big time college football already. So um, I think if they're able to pound the rock, uh, they're going to be able to win this game. I am on Miami money line in this one. Um, still want to break down a couple other things, but um, yeah, you also, I forgot to mention Xavier Restrepo, another dynamic receiver uh, last year had, I believe 900 yards for them. He's going to go in the NFL draft. It's just Cam Ward's never had this much talent around him offensively. And if this offensive line can be just – think he's going to have a lot of success. I have Miami over nine wins, minus 140, over nine and a half, plus 140. Little uh, pregame, uh, little futures in there already that I already threw in there. I have been going to the college football playoff. That's their expectations going into this year. Cam Ward could have gone to the NFL, came back here. He wants to win. He wants to go to the college football playoff championship. Mario Cristobal, he hasn't really gotten over that hump. This is his chance. If he doesn't do it this year, this might be it for him too. Billy Napier, I think it's done for him. You look at their total wins this year, over four and a half, a little bit juice. 
folks don't think they're going to win five games. And if they do, it's probably going to be about five. And that's unacceptable uh, for the Florida program. So I think both these coaches are going to be on the hot seat going to this year. But I just think Miami has the edge athletically wise on the defensive side. Um, they have the better quarterback. Um, you know, they do have some young corners out there. They have a young sophomore corner who's coming in. But I've heard a lot of good things about him from fall camp. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see, too, because Graham Mertz, you know, when he had time to throw last year, he was able to chuck it. He was able to throw it all over the field when he had time. But again, this defensive line is going to be getting after him a lot. Um, so I'm on Miami in this one. I got minus 130, whatever the best line you can get right now. I'm not going to mess around with the two and a half in this one. Um, I got two units on this. I don't throw two units on a lot of plays. You guys know that in the chat. I always say if I'm going to throw two units. Um, this was close to a three unit play after I saw the market. Because when I look at the market now, I like what Jimmy said, I thought this was going to be a public spot. I really thought that everyone's going to be on Miami because, you know, you bring in Cam Ward, you bring in Damian Martinez. 34% of bets, 36% of money, something around there from what I'm seeing. I, I'm liking Miami a lot in this spot. It might be a three-unit play before uh, kickoff. just depends on where this line goes. I probably should throw in that three units right now, but I'm going to stick with my two units. But, um, yeah, Miami money lines. It's so fishy that a team that's expected to win or has the number at, uh, for wins at four and a half – against a team that's at nine or nine and a half is under a field goal dog. It just, it, and then to see that 67% of tickets and 65% of the cash are on Florida. I mean, is it, is it the fact that the swamp is such a tough place to play in Gainesville? Is that the only reason? What, what, what could there be another reason that this would, because you set this lineup under a field goal, you think that the public's going to be all over the hurricanes. 100%. Yeah. That's why I'm confused about. I thought when I saw the, I was, that's one thing I was worried about was the market going into this one. Um, like you said, I think it might just be the swamp. That's what I'm hearing from everyone. Um, all my OGs and stuff have all told me, um, you know, don't bet against Florida and the swamp. Don't take Miami. But it's just from a talent level perspective, um, I just I think this is going to be a mismatch everywhere you look at it on the field. Um, Cameron Ward's going to be the best player out there. Damian Martinez is going to be the best running back out there. They've got the better receivers. They've got the better defensive line. Um, it all adds up. So I'm so, I'm shocked that the public is uh, on Florida, but it's got to be because of the swamps. Line time sports getting his account started here with us. <laughs> On Miami money line minus 130. He's tweeted out all of his action. He tweeted this out yesterday at Wine Time Sports is his handle on X. We move on. 